All right, everybody, once you have your chosen bird reference image, you're gonna go ahead and lightly sketch out this image on your drawing paper. We wanna make sure we're drawing nice and light because eventually when we're done with our pointillism, we're actually gonna go back and erase our pencil lines. So the lighter you draw now, the easier it's gonna be for you to go back and erase those pencil lines later. As we're sketching this out, we wanna make sure we're filling the page with our main subject. So you wanna make sure you're drawing your bird nice and big. And you also wanna make sure you're creating accurate proportions. I like to have my students check in with me after they've drawn their bird and before they start adding their pointillism. Once you're done with your bird drawing, then you're gonna go ahead and start looking at what colors you're gonna need. And when you start with your pointillism, you wanna make sure that you're just creating small little dots and you're taking your time. Now we already practiced together with our pointillism practice worksheet. So we've learned how to create different values and to blend different colors together. So you're gonna go ahead and use those techniques as you're adding in the color for your bird. Notice how I'm using several different shades of green. So I went in first with my darker green and now I'm going in with my lighter green. The more different colors that you add together, the more your image is going to really pop and look more interesting. If I was to just stick with one type of green, then I wouldn't be creating the different values and my artwork would not look as interesting. You can see I also went in with some darker blue to add in some of the darker values on the bottom tail feathers and the head. And I really like to outline with dots first now with pointillism, we don't actually outline with lines. Instead, we go in and we outline with teeny tiny little dots. So make sure you're just using dots on this artwork, no lines at all, except for those pencil lines that we started with. But we're gonna go back and erase those at the end. And then remember, the closer you put dots together, the darker that value is going to be. When you spread them out, you're gonna create a lighter value. And here I am, I'm just layering even more, even a lighter green on top. And then my hummingbird's neck is really bright and red. So I'm going in and I, I noticed that the middle of the neck is a little bit brighter than the edges. So I'm adding more dots around the edges to create a darker value and leaving less dots in the middle so that there looks like, it looks like there's a highlight kind of in the middle of the neck. And even though the hummingbird's little chest area is white, I still went in with a gray to add some value at the bottom and around the edges. All right, my reference image has a flower in it. Yours might not have a flower in it. So if yours doesn't have a flower, you're gonna take up a lot more space with the bird. But because I had a flower in mine, I made my bird a little bit smaller so that I could fit the flower in there as well. Okay everybody, once you're done with the main subject of your image, it's time to start on the background. 
now we've had to be really patient so far adding our teeny tiny little dots so if you need to take a little break before you start on your background i'd rather you do that than to compromise on your craftsmanship we want to make sure that our dots in our background stay dots we don't want them to turn into stripes if we start to get impatient sometimes that can happen so make sure you're taking your time staying patient and doing your best on your background you can change up the color if you want to in my reference image my background was green but i really wanted a color that would contrast more with my hummingbird since my hummingbird is green i wanted the hummingbird to really pop so i decided to change my background to blue so i'm going in first with my light blue and you wanna make sure you're using at least two different shades in the background. So after I do my light blue, I'm actually gonna go in and do a darker blue as well. One of the things that helps make your background look even better is if you change up the value in your background. So I'm going to actually be creating a gradient, a vignette, where I'm going to make it a little darker around the edges. And actually, as I was working on my background, I noticed that I wanted my hummingbird to be a little bit more brown. So if you're working on your background and you notice something, you can go back in and fix whatever you need to. So here I'm going in with a little bit of a darker blue because the background actually takes lots and lots of dots. And this is sped up, but I, it actually took me quite a while to do the background. So now I'm going in and I'm darkening up the edges because I wanted to really highlight the center, the focal point of the bird and the flower. So you might decide to darken up your edges too or you might start with a darker value at the bottom and then make it get a little lighter as you get closer to the top. But if you change up the value in your background, instead of having it all the same va uh, value the whole way, it can make your background look more interesting. And once you've taken your time and done your very best, don't forget that last step of going back in and erasing those pencil lines. Let me show you two common mistakes I've seen and how you can avoid those. So one, you wanna pay attention to the quality of your dots. You want your marker to be straight up and down and you want your dots to be small. If you come in at an angle, you can accidentally create stripes instead of dots. And if you press too hard, your dots might be too big. You wanna make sure you're taking your time and doing really small dots. Another thing you wanna make sure of, if you're going around an object, like let's say you're doing the back, Around, around your flower. You want to make sure you're going slow and taking your time so that way you're not getting any of the background color into the subject. Overall, as long as you're taking your time and paying attention, you should do a great job on this project.